Hi guys, Brad Norman here. I'm really excited to bring you my next guest. I've been trying to get him on camera for quite a while now. He's a very experienced tax deed investor. He's been doing real estate for way longer than me. Uh, tax deeds like 20 years. Um, he's built a fund, he's got huge cash flow, and he's gonna explain why he prefers buying properties at tax deed auctions than your you, you usual of like bank foreclosures, why you can get them so cheap. Um, he's the real deal. Uh, I'm very proud to be able to sit down with him and interview him for you guys and teach you guys what's possible. So hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on the inside. Hey guys, today I've got a very special guest for you guys. Uh, his name's Stephen Seal. He's one of the most successful tax deed buyers that I know out there. And I've got him in today to talk about his story and you know how he, how he built his fund and how many properties he's owned. So welcome, Steve. Thank you. So Steve, how, how, how did you get involved in tax deeds? And you know, how long have you been involved in tax deeds, I'd say? Well, I started buying tax deeds in 1997. So I guess 24 years ago. Wow. And yeah. I was taking uh, night classes to get my real estate license. Yeah. And one day at lunch, I was sitting in my car reading the textbook for that night's lecture to uh, to study for what we we're going to learn that night. And I was reading about what happens to people when they don't pay their property taxes. Oh, yeah. And I, I was on fire because I realized there was just a huge, 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 enormous opportunity that I didn't think anybody was working on um, buying tax defaulted property. And by going to those classes and understanding kind of the mechanics of how it works when people don't pay their taxes, it kind of gave me a leg up to understand what I needed to do to be able to buy the properties. Wow. Wow. And then when, when did you decide, um, uh, I mean, you've got a fund now, when did you decide to, to set up a fund? When did you get to that point? I started the fund in 2013. Okay. And um, what did you grow that fund to? Fund to? Well, that was our first fund and it was only buying tax lien certificates. It wasn't buying uh, right. tax deeds. Right. And then in 2015, we started our second fund, which we raised uh, $60 million and we wound up buying 1,200 rental houses. Wow. And what was the, what was the, uh, what was the cash flow on that per month? Uh, almost 750000 a month in rental income. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. So the possibility, I mean, this is what I want to tell my students, you know, you can start with one house, but you're, you're, you've done the main thing. You've gone from one house and created a fund and built this company and cash flow and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we just, we built it really, really quickly. We didn't borrow any money. We used pure equity to buy all the houses. Uh, we had houses in a dozen markets. I think at one point we were the 13th largest owner of single family in the country. We wow. were probably the largest owner of single family with no debt, I right. suspect. Right. And these houses, obviously, um, when you buy them from a taxi auction, they've been normally been empty a couple of years. What's your what's your kind of average spend when you when you fix up these houses to to rent them out? What do you kind of spend on them? Would you say typically fifteen or eighteen thousand? That's good per, per property. Yeah. What, do you, what do you normally do? Put a new kitchen in, new flooring, just the basics, or almost always it needs kitchens and bathrooms. The bedrooms are pretty easy and low maintenance. Um, you know, tenants want to have especially the women, they want to have a nice kitchen because they're spending a lot of time in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, the kitchen and the bathroom is the big selling point. That's where, But it's also expensive. That's where we're spending the bulk of the money. Yeah. And also on deferred maintenance on the outside, roof and paint. Roof and paint. I mean, and you, I mean, you don't mind spending a bit more money because you, you're going to keep these properties. It's not like you're just doing a quick flip and selling it. You right. Can, we, we were never flipping them. Uh, we sold very few of them. It was purely just a, a long-term hold cash flow play. Yeah. That's fantastic. Now, do you, I think you just said that, but you don't just stick to one state. You go wherever the auctions are. You, you travel around and wherever there's an auction, you'll, you'll go to that and pick up a house. Yeah. You know, I think that's a problem a lot of people have is that they, they get two things confused. They, yeah. the, where you live has nothing to do with where you should probably do deals. Now, sometimes you need to be close to the deals you're doing, but, you know, 80 percent of people live in a market that is extremely competitive way overpriced and there probably aren't a lot of deals there yeah so 
I was always willing to travel and go find the deals and do deals where there were bargains, that's regardless right. of where I lived. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I tell a lot of the students, you know, you've got to do the legwork, you, you know, you should, you should fly and drive and put the effort in, you know, don't just try right. and sort of like, you know, do what others are not willing to do to get there, you know? So. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Just because you live somewhere doesn't mean you should do deals there. No, that's exactly why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously you've bought like 1200 houses and rented them out. Have you got any interesting stories? You've bought any oh, houses? You've had some, yeah, you've had some you know, one of the more interesting ones was a piece of property that we bought and we bought it for $11,000. And after we bought it, I uh, started to have doubts, felt like we were probably going to lose money on it. I was, I was not happy. You know, granted 11,000, it's not a ton of money, but it's nothing to yeah. sneeze at. Right. Yeah, that's right. And then along comes the city and they decided to widen the road. And so they took eight feet of the front of the property away from us and wound up giving us $40,000 for the, <laughs> for the easement. And so it's right. just kind of funny, you know, you think you made a mistake and suddenly yes. you got four times your money and now you got the property for free, you know, so. <laughs> and you still got the bit of land, you still got land you can do something with. Right. That's right. Great. That's great. Um, so do you, Obviously, I was going to ask you the question. Do you just buy houses or do you buy land as well? You we land. buy land also. Yeah. Okay. So I own LandCentral.com, which is the largest online retailer of land in the country. We, we sell land with seller financing. It's a, also a cash flow model, just like our fund with the rental houses is also a long-term cash flow model. Right. So would you say, uh, I mean, you've obviously been in real estate a long time now. Would you say there's no, there's no real cheaper way of picking up a property than, than a tax deed auction. For sure. A absolutely. You where, know, where, where um, you buy something where it's just been foreclosed with the back taxes. Well, here's, here's the interesting thing about a, a tax sale that I think most people overlook. Yeah. When someone is selling something on the open market, I don't care if it's real estate or a car or a piece of clothing, the price that they're asking has some relationship to the market value of the item they're selling. Right? Yeah. But yeah. in tax deed sales, the value of the property has nothing to do with the opening bid or the purchase price. It, it's the back taxes owing. That's it. Yeah. So there's this huge dichotomy there where there is no relationship between what it's worth and what you might have to pay for it versus everything else in a free market economy is purely pricing always starts with what's it worth, exactly. right? With yeah. tax deed sales, what it's worth has nothing to do with what's occurring in that, in that economy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's such a, uh, a low entry point of getting involved in real estate, you know, it's cheap right. bank foreclosures, you're, you're picking up in some places, you're, you're picking properties up for 2000 bucks. Right. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, places in, in, in Indiana and that. Um, I think that's my last question, Steve. Really, it was just I just wanted to get you in front of my students just to show them, you know, what is possible. You know, uh, you've obviously gone from buying one house to creating a whole company to do with land, and you know, building a, building a huge portfolio. You know, sixty million dollars, and uh, I see you like fishing with your fish in the back as well. Yeah, it's your hobbies. Well, it's afforded me the time and the money to be able to fish. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks, Steve. Thanks for coming on the interview, and. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate you uh, talking to my students and letting me know what, what is possible. You're welcome, glad Thank to do it. Hi guys, just wanna to talk to you a bit about the course I've put on. In this course, you're gonna learn a shortcut to tax fees and tax liens. I'm gonna teach you all that I know and cut out all the stuff that I had mistakes with, which you're not gonna make mistakes with because you're learning from me. Uh, in this course, I'm gonna give you all my contacts. You're gonna have all the people that I've been dealing with for the last seven years, uh, that it's taken me seven years to find these people. That's a shortcut for you. I'm going to tell you where to buy, what, where not to buy, what to buy, what not to buy, and um, how you can offload your properties quick if you don't if you don't want to refurbish them. You just want to like cut the grass and stick them back up to sell and try and make a quick five grand. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I believe there's no better way than uh, making money uh, at a low entry cost of entry point as tax fees and liens. So um, sign up below and uh, see you on the inside. <laughs>